Okay, so today I basically wanted to show how I ink a fairly simple drawing. Um, this time it's over the pencils of Randy Green. So when you take a drawing like this, which is a blue line print, probably the best thing to do is tackle the outline first and then work in from there. Now Randy's pencils on this piece were amazingly fluid. You want to try to work very hard to keep the fluid element of the lines and not flatten them. Now the other thing you're going to want to note is there's some fairly basic rules of inking. Essentially, in this piece, <clears throat> whatever is closest to the viewer is going to be thickest. Um, so the lines through Spider-Man's hand, um, through the foot, down through the thigh, those are going to be fairly thick lines. When it gets into the body and into the offshoots, it's going to be much thinner. I like to use a much thicker pen to go over those and make them as fluid as possible because it's, it's really going to pull those lines out. Now ideally you want to get your lines nailed the first time. You don't want to have to go back and thicken them and re-thicken them. But basically you just got to eyeball it. There's absolutely no crime in revisiting your lines. But the goal, of course, is to get them as correct as possible the first time. Now I generally do not like shifting pins over and over again in the middle of a drawing. What I like to try to do is go through the drawing, get as much as I can with one pin, um, and when that pin won't work for those line weights, then I switch up my tool. Um, it's much more efficient to work that way. think about it you'll find that you waste a lot of time switching pins every time you make a line. Now 
Now the other thing I should mention is absolutely do not be afraid to add little details, nips and tucks, things that um, you feel the penciler should have really put in. Um, in this case you're not going to see a lot of those. Um, Randy's artwork is extremely finished, it's extremely professional. Um, there's very little that is going to need to be added to it. Um, that isn't always the case. Um, you're going to see a lot of pencil art, even from professionals, that could use a little something. Um, that's not to say it's bad. But your job as inker is not so much just to follow over the lines, although it is that to, so, to some extent. Um, the more important part of your job is as a finisher. You're basically taking that drawing and looking at it and saying, what should be there that's not there? What, what can I add to bring that piece to the next level? Okay, next I'm going to take a uh, fine point marker. These are Prismacolors. doesn't really matter what you use. Um, some people like the, the Sakura Micron pens. Um, those are great, too. Ultimately, it's, it's up to you. Um, there was very much a time in comic book drawing where everything was nib and brush and that's that's pretty much all it was it was either a uh, sable brush or a hunt 102 crow quill nib um, I've used those pretty extensively um, you know they're they're kind of a mess so when I can get away with using other tools I, I really prefer to but like I said don't don't let your tools um, limit what you're going to do artistically. Um, you know, you want to make your tools work for you, not not dictate uh, the work that you do. Now, and you'll notice when I work these lines. I try to make very thick to thin strokes. Um, that gives the line a little bit more depth and makes it just a hair more dynamic than just a boring old straight line. For the record, I have to admit, I usually stay away from Spider-Man because all those little web lines. Uh, as, as a as an anchor, that is that's my worst nightmare. So, my hats off to the guys who can do it on a monthly basis and make it look so good. when you make a mistake, and I make plenty, 